Hi, this is Tony Preston. I'm here today to offer you some help in understanding your integrative craniosacral manual. Um, your manual is divided into sections. There's a methodology section, anatomy and physiology overview, anatomy structures, patterns, range of motion assessments, somatic mobilizations, decompression, vault releases, facial releases, SBS patterns, protocols, and a reference section. The methodology section is divided into uh, two parts. The first part is underlying laws and principles, um, understanding laws of physiology like Davis Law or the Law of Facilitation, as well as understanding um, neurological organization or myofascial protection or even just the basic definition of the therapy. The second part of the methodology section is more about understanding the underlying components for organizing your session. Um, under, underlying, first of all, the basic components of a session. Uh, under, understanding um, the advantages and disadvantages of different assessment techniques. Understanding the hierarchy of governors and accessories so that you would better know how to sequence um, your session, understanding the advantage and disadvantage of different techniques like distraction or joint mobilization or direct technique or indirect technique. The next section is anatomy and physiology overview which looks at the cranium, craniosacral system from uh, an overview dividing it into uh, different sections of the cranium or having general pictures of the cranium or craniosacral system and labeling individual parts. This also has a section on uh, craniosacral physiology. The next section is the detail of anatomy structures. Anatomy structures, uh, we would go to this section to look up something like uh, what are venous sinuses or what is cerebrospinal fluid and how does it work or on an individual bone we might want to know detail about that bone. These are laid out consistently showing you um, a general description about the bone, its motion during flexion, its dural attachments, its articulations to different bones and in those articulations to different bones quite a bit of detail about what kind of articulation that is. After that section, there is a section on patterns that goes through and talks about different craniosacral patterns and what happens to the cranium as a whole and what the body looks like when the uh, craniosacral system is in that pattern. Uh, in this section, there's also uh, detailed information about pelvic patterns that are associate, associated to craniosacral patterns so that we can um, make those connections for those of us who do pelvic-based therapies like neuromuscular. Um, after that, there's a range of motion assessment section that goes through and talks about uh, an overview of range of motion assessments, how they're done, common errors, uh, what should be expected from them, and then each individual technique showing general information about it, uh, how the technique is done, and which muscles are indicated by that technique. After that, there's the somatic mobilization section, um, which gets us into technique. Um, techniques are laid out consistently in the same way. General information about the technique, some uh, information about soft tissue focus on that technique, cautions and contraindications, assessments with multiple perspectives on assessment, interview, palpation, postural, muscle testing, neurological testing, energetic, um, em emotional, and then um, after the, that, there's this, uh, we begin to get into um, the actual technique itself, pr preparation for the technique, steps to the technique, and what, uh, what might be done after the technique. Um, after the somatic mobilization section, which involves a good number of pelvic uh, mobilizations, there is a section on decompression. The decompression section goes through and talks about how to kind of pull the cranium apart so that it has a, a better movement and is decompressed. After that we have the 
vault section which goes through in detail talking about um, each mobilization of the vault sutures, um, labeling the bones in the same consistent color that they're labeled through the entire book as well as color-coded arrows to show you which direction you're moving. After that are facial releases going through showing us how to mobilize the face. Um, after that are SBS patterns taking us through each SBS pattern. After that we have a protocol section. Here is the uh, detail of pelvic functional organization which a couple of pa pages later is shown to us pictorially how to go through that. So once I've read through and understand, understood the detail of this I kind of have this little cheat sheet that I can use to uh, as a guide when I'm in therapy. Um, this happens for um, a number of different protocols, range of motion assessment protocol, pelvic balancing, a uh, quick somatic worksheet that we can go through for if you're just trying to solve a muscle problem. Here we can kind of label the muscle problem, go upwards through the go uh, hierarchy of governors to label what the associated components are, and then treatment notes about what happened as we took care of those associated governors. Um, decompression, temporal release, uh, functional organization, and you know at the end some very complex protocols for um, organizing both the cranium and the the body with that. Uh, at the end of the book there is a reference section that kind of goes through and says here is uh, each bone in the body and it's always labeled in this color. Um, Oscoxes are always red femurs are always yellow, parietal bones are always green, um, and then uh, arrows of direction showing us uh, you know everywhere in the book that there's a, an arrow that point, points posteriorly will be tan, everywhere that there's an arrow that points superiorly it'll be pink, and then some terms and a table of figures. I hope this has been helpful for you to understand and make better use of your integrative craniosacral manual.